Hi, this is Chris from Shantech.tv. Today we're looking at how to set up our own vehicle using Ash Vehicle Physics from the Unity Asset Store. This is one of the cheaper options available in the Asset Store, so it's a good entry level pack if you don't need ultra realism, also meaning it's great for an arcade style game. And since it's a good arcade style car controller, then what better pack to use than the Toon Racing pack from Six Games? Let's get started. So we're in Unity and I've imported Ash Vehicle Physics and the Toon Racing Pack. So the first thing we want to do, find the vehicle that you want to use in your scene. In my case I'll be using this rally car. The next thing we want to do with our car, unpack the prefab completely. And then these colliders that are attached to your vehicle, we'll just go through and remove all the colliders. The other thing to note is that your wheels are named accordingly, so when it comes to setting things up, you know what's what. So just make sure you can distinguish between front left, front right, rear left, rear right, and if not, just rename them to make things easier. And the next thing we want to do is we'll go to Tools, Ash Vehicle Physics, Vehicle Creator. Then we'll head back to Ash Assets, Ash Vehicle Physics, Prefabs, Player Vehicles. And in here is a selection of vehicles that you can use as a preset to set up your vehicle, how it controls, how it sounds. In my case, I'll be using the red car Drifty. So we'll just drag that into our preset. For our vehicle body, we'll use the parent of our vehicle. For the wheels, this is where the naming comes in, so we'll assign them appropriately. Then when it comes to these two here, this will adjust our colliders for our vehicle. So for the body mesh, we'll look for the game object that has your mesh attached. In my case, it's the parent. Sometimes you can have it as a child, depending on how your vehicle's set up. So we will drag that over. For your wheel mesh, you can use any of your wheels. Then we'll hit create vehicle, adjust colliders. And with our vehicle selected, we'll just bring that up a little bit in our world. And depending on how your vehicle is set up, the colliders may not match. So we'll select the body and the wheels. And if need be, we'll just bring it down to where it roughly matches the collider there. For my specific vehicle, I found some settings that worked for me. It's a little bit of trial and error sometimes. So for the body, minus 0.24. And then for my wheels, as you can see, they were quite close to the actual body, so they tend to come through the guard a little bit. So I found setting that to minus 1.2 gave me that little bit of clearance, so once it touches the ground, they don't come through the guard. And the next thing we want to do, if you're using the scene similar to me, then your main camera, you just want to attach a Cinemachine brain to your camera. Then this will pull the Cinemachine virtual camera that has been automatically added to your vehicle through to your camera. So then we'll hit play. And so that's the basic setup of your vehicle all done. Being a real arcadey car controller, the one thing I thought looked really good with this pack was a top-down camera view. And you can achieve this pretty easily using Cinemachine, so I'll show you how to set that up. So if you head to your vehicle, and then the camera controller, and we'll go to the game view just to see things a bit easier, you'll find everything here is locked. So to achieve what we want here, for the look at target, we'll set that to none. Then that'll give us the manual controls that we want. So we'll set the rotation to 45, and we'll leave the Y and the Z as zero. And then down under body, we will set this to framing. And then just underneath for the tracked object offset, we will set the X to minus 1.4. The Y will leave as zero. And the Z will set as 3.8. And for the camera distance, we'll set this to 30. So that gives you a nice little offset of your vehicle and a nice height for your camera. So we'll just hit play and see what this does currently. And then we'll make a few more tweaks. So you can see we're halfway there for what we want to achieve. 
uh, you might need a chuck bucket if you're playing like this because you'll get quite a bit of motion sickness. Okay, so next up, we can make one simple change here by grabbing our camera controller and moving it outside of our vehicle parent here. So when we hit play, you should find that you get no rotation on your camera. That comes from your vehicle, it just follows your vehicle along. So the one thing you'll notice now is the offset of the vehicle compared to the camera. So your vehicle and your camera will move with a bit of a delay. So as I go straight up here, my vehicle will go up. As I slow down, the camera will catch up. So with that camera view, you may want to tweak that a little bit. So that's done under your camera controller that has your virtual camera attached. And what you want to look for here is your damping in all the directions. So I found setting this to something like 0.1 in all the directions generally keeps your car pretty centered. It really depends on what kind of look you're going for in your game, so play around with what you think works for you. So that wraps up the first video from Ash Vehicle Physics. In the next video, we'll take a look at Ash Vehicle AI and integrating it with what we currently have here. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have, consider giving the video a like and subscribing to keep up to date with the future videos. Also, be sure to check out shantech.tv for a range of growing tutorial content. Thanks for watching.